your name first? Sure, Elliot Sokratov. I'm an account executive at Microsoft. Which division? Department? Yeah, so I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the Southern California uh, Enterprise Unit, looking after major, major accounts. Okay. What is Microsoft doing in media? Uh, quite a lot, actually. We, we do a number of things. Obviously, we have Xbox, and we're working on different aspects of the media industry, but really, we've made partnership recently with, with Avid and, and Adobe and, and, and uh, uh, working on different projects for rendering and working on just different aspects of it. Uh, as you can see here, we're showing off some of, the, some of the work that we're doing for rendering services with our N-Series GPU. Uh, equally, we do work for, with cognitive services and uh, machine learning and AI. We also have work that's being done around CDN for content delivery. When you say N-Series GPU, where is that? It's in the cloud. It's, uh, it's, this, it's this nebulous sort of area, but it's actually physically located throughout the world. Uh, we have a number of computers that are, that are working to, to solve common business problems. How do you do visual effects without, without running out of cores on your on-prem data centers? How do you burst into the cloud? How do you just do everything virtually without having to have a big uh, CapEx expenditure in order to accomplish the needs of your business? People are familiar with the word Azure, but it's not clear. There are many uh, interpretations. Would you clarify what does Azure represent? Azure essentially is cloud computing. It's our cloud computing platform. So if you think about Amazon's AWS, you think of Azure or even Google GCP, the, these are all sort of synonymous. It's just a name for a number of services. It doesn't necessarily mean just cloud computing. It can mean cloud storage. It could mean cloud uh, Azure Media Services, which is part of our content delivery and transcoding. It's, it means a lot. What can you show us today regarding uh, archiving? Right. So. One of the things I do want to show you guys is what we call our video indexer. It's actually an amalgamy or a compilation of a number of services, part of our Azure cognitive services. So we use machine learning and AI in order to identify speakers or images of people that are in frame or what the words that they're saying and even translate them from one language to another. Uh, as you mentioned about archive, you know, the ability to go through a large, large catalog automatically index it, create metadata, and then figure out ways to monetize it or even just know what's in your content. So I'm going to show that here. So this is Video Indexer, so VI, V like Victor, I like Idaho. Microsoft.com. It's actually currently in preview, so there is no cost of service as of today. Uh, that will change as we come out of preview, however. But like I said, it's a number of our services. So as you can see here, we've got some, some default sort of videos that we've uploaded. Uh, the videos are just ones that you get from either your own content or even you've uh, transcoded your own, uh, your own back catalog. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just click on one of these videos here. Oh, absolutely. Right now it's trying to grab the video from the internet and play it here. We're on the, uh, the Wi-Fi for the conference, so it's, it's going to take a second here. But right now what we're doing now is we're playing a video. It's playing in real time, as you can see. And what we've done already is, it's, if you notice here, it's got a bunch of little faces here. And it automatically recognized all of these individuals. So if I click on, if I click on this person here, it says it's Alex Kipman. But you'll notice down here what it tells me is he's actually in the scene further towards the back. And right, it's all tied to the timeline. So I can actually just fast forward to that scene. It will now stream from the internet. Again, we're using the, uh, the, the conference Wi-Fi, so it's going a little slow. Um, and it will actually just jump to right where he is. Oh, is, it, uh, is it limited to faces? It's not limited to faces. So if you look here, right below here, you'll notice that I'm not only looking at, oh, here we go. We can see him actually coming up on the screen here. There he is. And we, know his, we know it's his name because his na that comes up on the card right below. But it's not limited to faces. As you can, as you can see here, we've got other things that are, that are written here. So we have keywords, which are words that it actually sees within the video. And I can 
I can jump to those areas. Cirque du Soleil, as you can see, has been, has been red. But I can also find more generic things. So if I want to find the next time it sees grass, I can actually jump to that scene right from here. And again, these are automatically detected by the machine learning algorithm. It says, I know what grass looks like, as you can see, it found the grass. I can show you every single time in this video, grass appears. So some of the use cases are, you've got an archive from 50, 60 years ago where you have your, the title, maybe you have the main actor, but you don't know anything else about this. You don't know anything else about the, uh, the content in and of itself. So this is an easy way to create that metadata so you can slice it up, you can move it around, and you can actually potentially monetize it. One of the other things that you can see here is we're, we're also able to detect brands. So anytime we see the word Windows 10, it'll actually jump directly to that scene. Again, tied to, the, tied to the timeline, so I can go to every single time it sees that logo. But also, I get a transcript. The transcript was automatically highlighted for when somebody's speaking. It does a translation from English into any number of languages. As you can see here, I can select another language. Let's, let's assume that I want to have it in simplified Chinese. It's going to go out and do a translation and provide you what could be used as a rudimentary uh, subtitling or closed captioning, although it should be QC'd to make sure that it is accurate. Is this available to the public now? I mean, to, to potential customers? So like I said, the services themselves are available directly. The, the, the video indexer service is in preview, which it does mean all you have to do is sign in with a Microsoft Live account, and you have access. You can upload some content and really give it a play. Uh, it's all API driven, so what you can do is you can pull that out and do whatever you want with it. You can create additional services that sit on top of the service, or you can uh, just use it in order for your own business. Once the indexing is done here, is it exportable into Cat TV or some other kind of uh, video uh, database? So it's, it, it gives you an, uh, ex, sorry, it gives you an XML, so JSON that you're able to ex extrapolate the information. It's not directly ported into Cat TV or any type of MAM, um, but it doesn't mean you can't you can't pull that data and, and record it. Uh, what's the website people can access it through? Uh, this is vi.microsoft.com. What does VI stand for? Video Indexer. Oh, great.